So facial profiling, a useful tool, or a slippery slope making assumptions about people that could have dire consequences. To find out, I spoke to John Hollywood from the Rand Corporation and professor at the Pardee Rand Graduate School. He specializes in criminal justice, homeland security, and information technology. I began by asking him about how biometrics are most widely used today. To date, most of the use of biometrics has been different from the use of predictive analytics. So biometrics is usually being used for, say, if you've seen a criminal act on a video camera, say you know, a robbery, you can then potentially use facial recognition to figure out who actually carried it out. There's also some research looking at potential crimes in progress, someone pulling out what might be a gun, having a computer recognize that. On the predictive side, it's mostly about predicting what places, what locations, what times are at higher risk, mostly based on where there's been previous crime in the past. So the a lot of robbery, you're probably going to see a lot more robberies. The idea, though, of using biometrics to figure out who might actually be a criminal, that one is, is kind of uh, very odd and new to me. Now, it is obviously something that's very new. We have companies like Faceception right. who've actually signed some, some major security mm -hmm. deals. And basically what they're saying is through their algorithm, they do things like detecting poker players, whether or not they're telling the truth by some of their, some of their technology using the face. And they actually said that they were able to identify um, seven of the terrorists who were involved in the Brussels attacks. But there's also some of the dangers involved right. in making these assumptions. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I, I think say a, bit, a little bit about how this would work. From looking at your materials, what you're doing is that you would have a bunch of pictures of people who are known terrorists. You would have a bunch of pictures of people who are not terrorists. And you would have the computer uh, give them a sample of photos and say, OK, whose face is this closer to, someone who's a known terrorist or someone who's not? And if you look at what they did, you know, there are a lot of reasons why a computer can say that a particular person's face ended up being closer to the terrorist pictures than not. So one example could be is that in the photos, uh, certain ethnic characteristics, uh, certain kinds of facial features, and also even things like whether or not the person was smiling or not. Uh, one of the things that, that Faceception missed was a, was a picture of, of, of one of the terrorists who was, who was smiling broadly in, a fo in the photo. There's definitely a lot of room for some of this information to be used in, in nefarious ways also, because a lot of people are wondering, what about my privacy? How do I know that with the, some of these new passports that have the biometric facial recognition, that it won't be used to perhaps put them on some sort of terror list? What can people do if they're concerned about their privacy when it comes to things like this? Well, I think it's important for people just to pay attention to these sorts of, of initiatives going forward, uh, looking at what kinds of policies and laws are in place. Uh, you know, asking what kinds of investigations are being done. Um, so this particular one, if just based on your facial features, if you're more likely to be a terrorist or not, seems pretty far-fetched. Now, what about some of the momentum, though? Because obviously some, of, some companies are getting interest. They're getting more funding, more interest from governments. Are there any particular companies or countries that are perhaps taking a more leading role in this? In terms of using facial recognition in general, but that's more to identify known, known terrorists, known criminals. Uh, I mean, you're seeing some European countries. You're seeing the US having some interest. But a lot of it is still very early. There's still a lot of false positives in just figuring out whether this person really is uh, this actual known, known terrorist or criminal. You know, there's, there's still a lot of error in, in how we're doing that today.